Hello everyone, my name is Jainil. Welcome to your first tutorial on the Panda Board. In this tutorial, I will be talking about what is the Panda Board, why you should use the Panda Board, what are the different operating systems supported by the Panda Board. Then we will see the major features offered by the Panda Board and the reason why it is very popular. Then I will give you a live demo of Ubuntu 12.04 running on the Panda board. Then I will discuss a few applications you can make using the Panda board. Before I start this tutorial, I would like to thank SVTronics for sponsoring the Panda board for my research. So now, let us quickly go over and see the different features offered by the Panda board. So as you can see over here, I have the Panda board with me. So we will quickly see the different features offered by the Panda board. So over here you can see the Panda board is based on the OMAP processor which I am pointing over here. What this means is that it has a 1 GHz dual core processor. It has a 304 MHz GPU that is graphics processor unit. This means that you can run full HD videos on your Panda board and you can also render OpenGL based applications. It also has a built in digital signal processor. Now as you can see over here the Panda board also has a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability. Then over here is the expansion header. So if you want to expand the functionalities of the Panda board you can use this header. Over here you have the LCD expansion header which you can use to connect to external LCDs. This is the JTEC connector over here. Then over here you have the HDMI and DVI connectors which you can use to connect to external LCD or LEDs. Now when you want to see what is exactly going on inside the Panda board that is if you port an operating system on it you will need to know how the operating system is running or how to interact with it so in those kind of cases you need to connect to an external monitor using these two ports so to sum it up if you run an operating system like Ubuntu on it and to see that operating system you will need to use these two ports then over here on top you have the Ethernet port and below that you have two USB ports. Then you have the input power supply over here where you will be supplying 5 volt DC power supply. Then over here you have the two audio in and out jacks. Over here is the USB OTG. Then over here is the camera expansion header. Now this is the serial port. Now why would you be using the serial port on the Panda board? Well there are many reasons. The primary reason is that there will be often times when your Panda board will not boot correctly or you will have some problems. To see what problems you are currently having or what is going on exactly inside the Panda board you need a serial console on which you can see what is exactly going on. So in those kind of cases when we are getting errors or what type of errors we are getting we will be using the serial port to see and figure out those errors. And the other reasons might be that if you want to connect to other external uh, peripherals or accessories like the Arduino uh, or you want to pass something on the serial port for those kind of applications you will be using the serial port over here. Now. Over here you have the two switches, you have the reset switch and the user switch. Then this is the SD card slot in which you will be putting your normal SD card. So the SD card will be used to on which you will put your operating system files or any other kind of storage material that you would like to access that you will put on the SD card which will be mounted over here in the SD card slot right over here. So these were the major features on the Panda board and now we will continue our tutorial further. So as you can see the Panda board supports a variety of different operating systems such as Ubuntu, Android, Angstrom, Fedora, Sabayon. Now these are just a different operating system that are mentioned 
that can run on the Panda board successfully. But obviously, you can try other operating systems on the Panda board. Now, the Panda board is very compact in size, which means that using this feature, you can make commercial embedded applications using that. Now, you can make variety of different applications using the Panda board, such as you could actually run your different image processing codes or algorithms on the Panda board, which can actually give you an output in real time. In the coming tutorials, I'll be discussing how to port all these different operating systems on the Panda board. I will also discuss how to do image processing on the Panda board. Then I will also discuss how to connect the Kinect to the Panda board. So keep watching my YouTube channel and I'll be coming up with a couple of more tutorials on the Panda board. Now, I would also like to thank once again Svitronics for sponsoring this tutorial. I would like to thank my brother Nashil for taking the entire video and sparing his time. And before I end this tutorial, I would like uh, you guys to see my live demo of Ubuntu 12.04 running on the Panda board. And please check out our website that is svtronics.com from where you can purchase the Panda board. So here is the setup in my room. I have the Panda board running with Ubuntu 12.04 on it. Uh, as you can see right now over here, I am connected to the Wi-Fi network over here and I am currently browsing the Svetronics website over here, you can see that. So you can see that it is quite fast comparatively, uh, you would expect. Uh, this is normal my home folder, I have Mozilla Firefox running and, uh, and you would find the normal features that you have in the Ubuntu 12.04. So, this is the search option over here. As you can see, I have installed a lot of different applications on it. So, that was basically my live demo of Ubuntu 12.04 running on the Panda board. And thank you everyone for watching this tutorial. Thank you once again.